Across the Park podcast is proud to be sponsored by Globe Gas and Heating. For the best kitchen and bathroom renovations, boiler servicing and repair, and central and underfloor heating in the Northwest, head over to globecentralheating.com and quote Across the Park for a free quote. Hello everyone, welcome to the Across the Park podcast, it's Derby Week, here we are again, um, so we're very privileged today to be joined by former Everton, PSV, Man City, Rangers, England, but more importantly this week, massive Evertonian, Michael Ball, how are you doing Michael? I'm very good, how are you? Yeah, superb, mate, said Michael then, it's Ballie for the rest of the episode. Oh, alright, don't worry. But um, yeah, as I say, it's a, it's a, it, we're at that time again, it's it's Derby, we've got a few shows for you this week, just before we get into it, we've got this show with Ballie, we've got Peter Hooten on from the farm, massive Liverpoolian, just to give a bit of balance for the Reds and give an opposing opinion on the show, um, on the on the game, sorry, and then finally we've got a special with the Legger podcast, so two Reds on the, the Legger podcast, you'll be joining myself and Mil- Millsy to have something more of a, I guess, a debate and a bit of banter about, about the Derby, so three shows this week for everyone. We're going to start with this one, Ballie, just before we get into the um, your experience as a player, just want to talk to you first and foremost, as a blue growing up, um, what the Derby's meant to you, any memories that you have of, or in particular, of the Derby as, as a young fan? Yeah, well, it's it's Merseyside Derby week, isn't it? And like since I've been a kid, it was always the most exciting one of the season. Especially when back in my youth and growing up, we were both successful. They were uh, both dominating the league, so there was always like a loads of banter between yourself and your and your mates. And you know, we were pretty split, uh, my group of lads. So it's. It was, yeah, the football was important, but it was, it was more important to sort of get one over on your mates, to yeah, be honest, yeah. and, and have that joy and uh, give them a bit of stick and going to school the next day with your Everton scarf on and uh, being all joyous. But then on the flip side, it was always hard to take when it was the other way around, and especially in the cup finals, and th- that was they were difficult to take. Oh, and, my God. You know, going to school, and you you still got to wear that blue scarf with pride. Yeah, and, and yeah. Like, you know what, you know, with, with Everton and... And that was just, it was, it was enjoyable. You know, I think both teams were obviously doing dead well and um, it was a lot easier to support Everton back then than it is now for the younger generation. But um, yeah, no, I just I just loved it. I've always loved the derby. And, then, and as a kid, you, you know, we dream about hopefully one day being involved in a derby and, and that's all you do. You, you get on the park and you play against your mates, it's blue versus reds and whoever wins, you think that's going to be the result of the weekend as well. It's all, all, ch- all child uh, play, but it's... It's just what you first think when the fixtures come out. As a kid, for me, it's the first thing I look for. When's yeah. the derby? Um, and you know, even though the, the teams have, have, have drifted apart, in you know, one's still doing dead well and one's you know, pretty struggling. It doesn't really matter on derby day. No, I've no. been there as a player when I first started. We weren't the best side, but we we got positive results. And so it you know, it's all this, the cliches about you know, your form goes out the window type thing, but it sort of does. Uh, but it's just a bigger thing for the city okay. you know is the, the most played derby in, in football you know and most sending offs in football it's always something good to <laughs> so it's half, it's an r12 kickoff this one coming up so could be a few hangovers in the crowd yeah, before yeah. but let's hope the uh the players are, are right at it and cut on a, uh, a big display yeah definitely just just a couple of things on on the um on you growing up and, and you touched on the fact that both the clubs were you know successful at that time and and the, the dynamic of the, the two fans of, you know, you're competing at the top of the league, you're competing for trophies, obviously some of the difficult defeats maybe in cup finals, but do you think over the years the, the fact that that gulf's, you know, expanded between Liverpool being more successful, Everton struggling, has that changed the, the dynamic and, and maybe the feeling between the fans at times, do you think, or is it just the same to you? Um, it's been the same f- for me. Yeah. since I've been a youngster but you know speaking to my parents and speaking to my granddad they, they've seen a lot of difference in mm. how, how the fans react to each other over the years um, I've always been very very strong on the blue side so it's every defeat hurt really bad yeah. and, and every win was uh, celebrated, was celebrated yeah. very very hard <laughs> it, kind of, it didn't come round often so it's always been the same to me but I understand it I think obviously uh, the younger generation of Everton especially the 
our record at Anfield over the you know, 18, 19 years was mm. very, very poor. So, the, you know, there's hasn't been m- many times where they can go and celebrate, but they still turn up with the numbers. They still yeah. want to be there. That this could be the time. This could be the the moment that we we, we walk away celebrating. So, look, the, the passion's still there. The passion of both sides still there. But it's um, yeah, I understand where the sort of the hatred might be a little bit stronger than it has been in the past. That's only on past experience of speaking to my family. What's your again? We're gonna come on to your playing career in a moment. But what's your what generally? What's your routine on Derby? Have you got like a kind oh. of way to go about things differently? Um, Say differently. It's it's a match day, but you know it's a match day. I think as a fan, it's it's it, it's more nerve wracking. Mm. Uh, and I think um, as a fan, before I was playing, it was always nerve wracking, and it was always like your first thing you wake up, you. I wouldn't want to look at anything red. Or like <laughs> bad luck, you know. Make sure none of your clothing's got a bit. Yeah, of no, no. It, it hasn't worked. I don't know why I still <laughs> yeah. do it. You know, it, doesn't, it some, doesn't make any difference. I put some red boxes yeah, on this it's, year. It's just, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just going through or <laughs> trying to remember what you did one day when you when yeah, we done yeah. well. Can you uh, wear the same clothes <laughs> and you go through every tick list possible? But it doesn't work. But it's. Uh, it's just nerve wracking and enjoyable, you know. You, you can't wait for Mer- Merseyside week. You can't wait for the Derby week. You can't wait to sort of get with your mates and yeah. um, go with the game. But then also, it's the the flip side of things. You you, you feel nervous. You you're wondering what to do. But look, that's what football's all about. You want Definitely. you want to have that feeling. You want to have that buzz because if you didn't care, you know, it, it wouldn't be the uh, you know it wouldn't be as exciting, would it? You know, at the end of the day, and it's look, it's. It's brilliant, but remember me coming back to my first game, you know, I was more nervous sitting on the bench as a fan. And then you get that moment to play. You can do something about it when you're on the pitch. You can affect the game one way or the other. You can put out a little, you can get rid of a lot of frustration on the pitch, put it that way. You know, if needed to, as a fan, you can't. You just, you, you just all you got to do is back the, back the players on that pitch uh, as much as possible. And that's what you did as a youngster, as a fan, was going to the major side derbies. We're, we're always a battle. Um, and the probably my favourite one was just the one nil win after the four four. I think that's the, the a lot of a lot of fans got on the pitch yeah, a little yeah. bit. I nearly had the bravery to go to go <laughs> on the pitch, but my dad wouldn't let me back then. So yeah, they they were they're the moments you can always cherish. You can always look back on, and you just hope that you can uh, replicate them. Well, we're going to come on to your, your, your second appearance, um, which which was your first Merseyside derby in a moment. Just just to touch on something you just said then, and, and I guess for me to try and empathise in some way, which which I, I never will, unfortunately. You come into Derby, we can, I always think that wherever you start the week, you either go that way or that way. You no, know, I started this week thinking from a you know an optimist, optimism, optimism point of view in terms of thinking we could get a result, thinking we've got no chance. But if you feel like that day by day, you think, okay, hold on, and you, you look for reasons and, and ways that you might win the game. As a player, is it, did your emotions kind of shift like that towards a game? Or was it always like you're just on the job in hand in terms of what you've got to do on the pitch? No, not as a player. N- never as a player. You know, we knew it was going to be a tough game, but it's your time to express yourself, your time to deliver on a big occasion. So you look forward to it. Yeah, you always have that butterflies in your belly, but there were good butterflies. Yeah, it's something yeah. you look forward to. But you no, know, as a fan, I'm the, exactly the same. You know, you wake up one day and it depends who you speak to. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know your, your heart and your head. Your have a, WhatsApp yeah, stuff. yeah, your heart <laughs> and your head have a right good battle, <laughs> yeah. building up to the game. And, you know, people a very, very optimism gives you that buzz and then sometimes certain stats come into it you start yeah. being concerned about but you know, that's what it's all about you know and it's look it is what it is but it's just up to the players on the pitch to go out and express themselves and show a little bit of desire and more than them win their battles and hopefully you know, nine times out of ten you win football games that way and that's why I'm saying being a player is, is a lot easier than being a fan. Well, I, I can't, I can't, I can't say. Well, I wish it was. Otherwise, I would have played a few hundred games at Everton. Um, but just coming on to your, as I say, your second appearance, which is your first major side derby, just incredible in itself that the way that came about. But it was uh, for a bit of context to lose. It was nineteen ninety six or ninety seven. Um, it was been ninety seven, wasn't it? Because it was after Christmas the the Joe Royal was relieved, and Dave Watson was caretaker manager at the time. Also player, so player caretaker manager, which is, is extraordinary. But you were you were brought into the game as a substitute. Craig Short was injured. We were talking about it briefly before the show. Again, you you touched on how you know you, it's slightly different, so it's very different for a player coming into Derby Week. You know, you're focusing on the job in hand, etc. But talk us through that experience. You know, you you you've just made your debut a few days earlier, and you know you're sitting on the bench. Yeah, it was it was obviously a mad week for me. Um, 
you're being in and around the first team, training with them a lot and um, hoping to get your opportunity um, under Joe Royer. Unfortunately, it never really happened. Joe got relieved and the club was in a bit of a, a stalemate at the, at the time. And Dave Watson happily took took charge and player manager. And myself personally, I'm thinking, you know, Dave could have played it very, very safe. Kept with um, older players, their experienced players, but um, he kept me involved. Um, and through a little bit of luck for, on my end with a couple of injuries, Terry Field on, on the Saturday, but maybe debut against Tottenham, we won one nil. And then a few days later, um, in the Merseyside derby, and you, you, you're being a part of the changing room buzz. And look, there's, there is a difference in the changing rooms before they, these types of games. Whether the music's on a little bit louder, or sometimes it's total opposite. It's very quiet. You know, mm. people are concentrating on what they need to need to do, and I just felt a lot of nerves that day. I don't know why. I'm not normally like that. There was something different. I think it's because I was just on the bench and being my first Merseyside derby. But um, Craig Shaw got a nasty uh, fall, and he was down for quite a while. And I got given a nod, and then the nerves just went. Me sort of uh, game mode. I don't know what it is. It just sort of switched on, and I just all I had to do was listen to the senior pros. Well, Duncan just basically looked at me and pointed, stop him. You know, Rob Jones was very, very dangerous back yeah, then. Was very good you know, player, he right? was the one who was an outlet, an outlet for them. So my job was then, okay, I'll do it. I'll do the best of my ability. And I was just to, to cancel out Rob Jones and it, it worked. And they had to take him off and bring McAteer on, I think. And that was an, another plan was to just stop him. And yeah, yeah. after the game, we enjoyed it. We we, we got we got the, um, we got a point. We probably thought we could have done a little bit better. I was a bit frustrated a little bit afterwards because... I thought to myself, I'm a bit of a ball player. I like getting on the ball. I like getting the, you know, you know, start and play a little bit and you know, stuff. But I didn't really get involved in that side. I can't remember touching the ball too much. It was just cancelling out yeah. my opponents and stopping him, stopping their danger men. And um, and afterwards, getting a big hug off Duncan after the game and stuff like that meant meant a lot. So it was all um, it was a positive start for me first Merseyside derby, I suppose. Just want to touch on that briefly in terms of the I guess the the mindset of the players because you just said then you know you considered yourself a ball player. Mm. You know you you wanted to get on the ball, you wanted to express yourself, but in that certain game, under those circumstances, you, you either couldn't or you didn't feel it was maybe appropriate. Is that something you recognise now watching players sometimes that they almost revert to a different mentality going into derbies and is there a, not fear but you know you know what I mean like that pressure it's trying to um, enjoy the occasion but also express yourself at the occasion mm. there's times where both sides have overstepped the mark you know yeah. and like winning battles doesn't mean about kicking the opposition harder than you yeah, it's about you, if you, like. you know it's, <laughs> it's uh, no, I'll just, there's moments yeah, you can yeah. <laughs> course, not with VAR back in my day but there's it's all about running further than them yeah. showing desire it's showing um, your commitment that you're going to give them a, a, a very difficult game. That's what that's what I mean by winning battles. And yeah, the yeah. majority of your teammates do that. You, you you're probably going to win a, a football game. It's a psychological. But it's the bigger anyway. players that you rely on. Um, the ball players, especially because it's composure in derbies, yeah. that probably make the difference. Because the ones who's got the the right composure, control the ball, and they play the ball at a, a right tempo. Mm. You know, they're not trying to. Get rid of the ball as quick as possible. Not like a like a jack of potatoes, just kicking the ball, hit and rush. And it's the ones who put the foot on the ball can see the picture and find a um, you know a through ball that can make a massive difference. And we've seen that in go over the history of the uh, of all the Merseyside derby back in the four four game yeah. years ago when I was a kid. It was a a mad game, but the goals came down to a bit of composure and a bit of cuteness, uh, cleverness in your head. And it's up to the players to step up to the plate. The occasion can get to the, get to them. You know, it, we've seen that on both sides that the amount of sends and offs in this fixture it does happen. Um, but it's just being cute, being clever. You know, and I think back in my day it was more. I think Liverpool struggled with the occasion, with the aggression and stuff, with the more yeah. than us. We we were aggressive, but we were cute with it. We were yeah, clever yeah. with it because they thought we were going to be over aggressive, yeah, so yeah. they were a bit sort of taken back when we weren't as full on as what they thought. But when there was an opportunity to be full on, we would be. What um, yeah, well, you know, especially Duncan would be hundred percent put on. So they would be more concerned of what we were about to do. Mm. Um, so it was sort of about a lot of mind games going on back then. It was all about you know if you can stick one on them, you you would. But um, you didn't have to do it every time, you know. As long as you force them backwards and sideways, you, you've done your job. And um, it's it's all about finding solutions and playing to your strengths. And our strengths was obviously the big man up front. We were wide at free kicks, long throw-ins, and winning second balls. That that's 
they couldn't cope with stuff like that. So we played to our strengths and uh, we did pretty well. Yeah, I mean, uh, without getting too psychological about it, there's there's aggression and there's assertion, isn't there? And mm -hmm. I, I felt I always felt as a, a youngster growing up watching you and watching that team and, and those teams that that don't particularly well against Liverpool. You were always always able to assert yourself on the game and almost have that level, whereas Liverpool were almost, almost trying the best to kind of almost drum up that aggression that wasn't maybe natural to some of them. You know, yeah, in, in I think it was. I, I maybe, I don't know whether it was because we, we had quite a lot of youngsters back then as well, but as Liverpool did as well. They had a few uh, youngsters mm. there about, so I don't think it was just about that. I think it was just about sometimes the referee, you knew what type of referee he was, you in front of the home crowd. Um, like obviously, we had the Unzi and Fowler getting sent off together. The, um but it's like Onzi's been cute in the past. He's done a few little, well, it's, it's a dive at the end of the day. <laughs> the referees, you know, he's con the referee. Cute's um, probably not the word that most yeah, people cute, associate with Onzi. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's occasions like that, that moments like that change games. And I think Gerard Hooley back then really wanted to, Liverpool to concentrate on making it just a normal game. Mm. They tried to play down the derby. It didn't mean that much to them. They tried to play down as much as they could. But, it, you know, that was their mindset because they knew they couldn't, matches physically they had to try and a, a different style mentally going into the game and as i think as you said a few of them wanted the aggression some it wasn't natural to them so mm. we could play on that a little bit but look even if they wanted to be 100 percent aggression you, you're against duncan you, 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 it you, doesn't matter you're, yeah. you're not gonna you're not yeah. gonna win that battle you know if duncan's is is at it he's on it um and we play to his strengths you know no one no one could match him uh, on each day so that was that was our sort of Power play, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know, play play on Duncan, and I think when he scored that goal, um, you know, they all were marking him at the ball. I took the long throw, and I wasn't throwing it to him. You know, it was over his head for him to spin, and yeah, obviously, yeah. He obviously he's got to put it away at the end of the day. So it's um, they they knew our strengths, you know, and it's happened for years after my day with Cahill, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know, Timmy Cahill, he, he's a different character to Duncan Ferguson but you know he was a danger, and Liverpool tried everything possible for him to stop scoring goals against them, but Good players in big moments find a, way. find a way. Yeah, definitely. Well, I want to take it into some of your derbies. As, as we touched on before the show, you, you know, you had a, a very good record in derbies. Was it how many defeats? Was it just the one or two defeats? Um, I think there was three in nine. But I only lost one in my first six. Yeah, that was uh, one, you know, one defeat. But we've had a few where uh, it should have been VAR back in our day. <laughs> oh, we my God. We would have got a few of them. Yeah. The Donaldson one springs to mind. Well, that, that, that wasn't even... Uh, wasn't even VAR, VAR again for the context of some of the the younger younger listeners or viewers. Um, I want to say it was in ninety eight, ninety nine, around that time. I remember that I was on a ski trip with the school, mm. and we were coming back on on the plane, and the pilot was a was a, was a scouser actually, and he said, "Look, I, I know there's a lot of uh, blues and reds on the plane. I'll you know let you know at the end what the score was." And he read it out at the end, yeah. but he kind of says under his breath, "There was a bit of a strange situation at the end of the game where a goal was disallowed." Graham, like, oh, was it Graham Paul? Graham Paul, it was, yeah. Mm. He, he, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but he <laughs> said since, hasn't he? Like you know, he knew instantly that it that he made know, a mistake. He, he balls it up. Yeah, but you know, you you couldn't really well, go just, back. Yeah, I think I sprinted more towards him <laughs> than you did in the whole the game. game. To be honest. <laughs> so, so what actually happens again is is the ball was was taken. Well, the kick was taken by the goalie. It was the goalie. Vesterveld was it? I Must have been so, Vesterveld. Yes. So Vesterveld took a free kick. Donaldson's kind of cleverly walking into the line of the free kick. I guess so turned his back, trying yeah. to slow things down, or you know trying to influence the and Vesterveld's kicked the ball and Thomas justin has been the best part of 10 yards away he wasn't like a yard away was he and it hit him on the back and went into the Gladys Street and obviously the whole ground's gone into to, you know into raptures and stuff and we we thought it was the winner and the ref had blew the whistle when the ball was on its way for full time literally rolling in for full time imagine that mm. oh yeah we weren't happy at that one ridiculous we one um as it's the Anfield derby, I want to I want to take it into the I guess a high and low type type moments mm -hmm. or two two games. Um, the first one I'm I'm going to touch on was it was a massive high for me. It was my first Anfield derby actually. It was um, around November I think it was 1999. Um, it might have been earlier actually. It was earlier. It was earlier. Kevin Campbell's got the yeah. the only goal. Him and Franny Jeffers have just kindled up, just started to kindle up. This is mm. incredible chemistry that they had. Little one two inside the area, and Campbell's you know slotted it. Talk us through that game because that was that was an, it was a brilliant game. But uh, you know, again, almost an atypical derby. It's, it's, at that a, point. it's a match that I think, well, 
players from my day probably spoke about that a lot more than what we <laughs> yeah, probably had liked time. to because yeah. we haven't had that success at Anfield. We always yeah. revert back. I think if I was yeah. one of the modern players now, I'd be sick of hearing about Kevin Campbell. Yeah, yeah. I want to make my own history. <laughs> yeah. and it's down for these this, this week to make their own history. Obviously, yeah. Richie and Sigerson did it a couple of years ago in COVID, but the fans never got to see that. Uh, so, yeah, so Kev's always, it always comes up. And look, it was a game that we that we just had to win. We had to mm. get a point for ourselves. Yeah. Um, and we were, as a, as a team, um, we were all over the place a little bit. Mm. We, we, we seemed to ground out some great results and great performances and then throw it away the following week. We just couldn't get consistency and um, it was really a frustrating season for us. But then, obviously, look, you go to Anfield and you, you get a win. It was um, It was enjoyable. And I think besides the game, it was more experience afterwards you know in the bats and having a you know a good little like celebration jumping about and really being like look, you're done in you're knackered to, to yeah. get this in the bath and everything it was it was all great and then the following day you know going to a local cafe around the corner walking around the roads and the, the fans are driving past giving you the beep and you're getting a few fingers from the, the other <laughs> side and so it was all good fun you know but yeah. it was sort of like the, it was just I think the manager's point of view was to go to, to remind the players that that's what it means you mm. know to, to the players if you keep on that performances you've you beat your arch rivals and let's, let's keep that momentum let's, yeah, you, know, yeah. you can do it you know we believe in ourselves a bit more than what we have done so look it's the it's always it's always great to to win there um and yeah you, you, you look in the crowd and half of them you, your mates can you, you're getting i was in the car <laughs> you, you get you're getting some stick back <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. you can hear them and go i, I recognize that voice and it's half of my mates as well so it's um uh, it's good because that goes back to childhood. It's like you've got a, an opportunity to, to, to rub it in for them for a the, for the few days. Again, I know, I know that it's maybe not exactly the same context as, as you touched on then. It was a long time ago, mm. but it, it was a similar type of dynamic. I think going into that game is that Liverpool were, you know, on paper, the better side, the team that was expected to win. Mm. Um, Everton were a team that needed points. Again, similarities going into this weekend. Yeah. Obviously, the goal helps fairly early on, mm. but was there anything else before the game, in the game, that you felt kind of made that difference that night, or was it just one of those nights? No, I think it was just one of those nights. There was nothing special leading up there in training. Training was just normal. Um, you know, we look at every opposition beforehand and see where the threat is and what mm. the, what they can uh, bring to the table and what you need to be switched on for and what looking for. But it's all about keeping together as a team. You know, we had to be tight. We we were going away from home. We had to sort of trust that if we do get an opportunity, can we? take it full advantage we thought we've always thought that defensively Liverpool was the, was the weakest part of them especially from set pieces and with Kevin Campbell up there will, will cause problems mm. um, but we've got to get the pull up there yeah, you know yeah. and that you know, again, sounds very similar you know, <laughs> yeah, and if you, if you're against a team who, who dominating probably a better footballing team it was, mm. it's difficult but you, uh, yeah the early goal does count but then it's not just backs against the wall which probably felt no, like no. it was you know we, we still have to battle you still have to win your own battles and I don't know whether it's just me, but I think a lot of the other players are all the same. You don't want to be letting your teammates down, so mm. you want to make sure you don't make a mistake. And maybe you, there's an opportunity to put your foot on the ball, show a bit of composure, but then there's times to kick it into Rose Ed and reset and get yourself ready, get your team ready, give you a chance to have a bit of a breather um, and hold on to the win. And thankfully, we did. Well, before we come on, you, you touched on a game, and I'm, I'm not going to go too much into this game, but I just want to focus on one particular aspect of the game that we lost 3 2 at Anfield. You talked about that one being particularly memorable because Walter Smith had kind of been very strange before the kickoff, made a few changes that you thought were, were a bit odd. Just just before you go into that, do you think that's a, do you think that's a key going into derbies is almost the players knowing almost who they're going to play with, that group being as together as possible? Do you think that's a, a key factor or...? Maybe so. I think a lot of players like to have consistency. You know, some like to be surprised, and it, mm. it you know gives them a bit of an edge to the game. You know, and I've been on both sides of it um, at different clubs where you're not expecting to be playing, and also, and then you're playing in a different position, and your um, your mindset totally changes. You get on and just do a job. You end up playing well. You know, you, um, sometimes you can get lackadaisical where you know what's going to happen. Yeah, you know, where you're going to be and complacency sets yeah. in. So I can see both sides of it. But yeah, that thanks for bringing that one up. That was my first derby loss. <laughs> um, so. and it, it was uh, yeah, the, it was three two. Um, but we're in the hotel the night before the game, um, and then Walter, you know, rang my room and told me to pop in. Um, so I, you know, I don't 
don't know. I've never had to do that with Walter the, in a hotel and change and training ground. Yeah, we spoke quite a, a bit. lot. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I wasn't expecting what, what what was to happen. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't know. Um, mm. I was thinking, what have I done now? Type yeah. thing. But, um, <laughs> yeah, walked in. He sat down and he just said, you know, I don't. Th- I think he was winding me up. I, I, yeah, you know, I think he, he must have been whining because he just said, "Look, I think I'm not going to play you today." Um, I do you reckon he was trying to provoke a reaction a little bit, or trying to see? Yeah, what? I think so. Um, but it wasn't a reaction I probably he, he would expect. Mm. You know, but there was a few choice words from myself. Um, I was very sort of went quiet. Yeah, I said to the team afterwards. I said I, I was a bit different than what I actually acted. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I was quite tearful. I was quite mm. emotional over that. Um, <clears throat> And he just, I can't remember the reason why, he just basically said, you know, I don't... You probably, you probably weren't listening at that point. Yeah, it sort of switched off. It was something like, you know, it, I don't think it means, means enough to you or something like that. My and, God. And I was like, he's, I sort of probably blanked out a little bit, yeah. really, and I just walked out, um, yeah, quite emotional, walked to my room, and mm. I was like, what, you know, we had to go straight back down to the team meeting. Um, so we're sitting in the team meeting, I'm pretty sort of head just down, not really yeah. talking to anybody, not really going to listen to what Walter had to say. And, and I'm sorry, I missed another thing when he turns over. The, he went to write the team out with a with a green pen and he wouldn't do that either because obviously the Celtic connection. Oh, and wow. I went, so, wow, well, I've got that weird thing with red. He yeah, was the yeah. same. So we had to wait a while for someone to find a blue or black <laughs> pen. And then he, he he put the team out and I'm in the starting lineup. So that confused me. How, how, what was the time difference we seen him saying that here and actually writing the team out? 15... 15 minutes, 20 minutes, if that. Wow. It was, um, it, uh, so I was really, that was strange. It's the first time I've had that type of, I don't know, just the way a manager's gone about things yeah, to get yeah. a reaction out of you. Um, I don't need that type of thing, especially for the Merseyside derby. There's probably a few players in that team who probably could have done, with it. Done yeah. with it. Um, just a reminder that this is mm. what it means, that I was the last person to do. And then I remember that game sort of, like similar to my first one. Well, no, not my first. Just floating about. It was sort of in the back of my mind of why is he picking on me? That type of attitude. And, you know, I didn't really get involved in the game enough. You know, I was um, I was probably just going about my emotions a little bit, just mm. floating around the pitch, not really affecting the game one way, not making mistakes the other way, but sort of the game's bypassing me more than anything. And it was it was obviously the, the way the game went. It was frustrating as well because um, I thought we were sort of, you know, we, we had a, a, a decent opportunity and then, you know, to find ourselves, it was, it was two early or three early goals really in that game mm. and then um, they got a penalty three one. the Franny come on and scored but then Walter also, I think he started Michael Branch in that mm. game as well so there was a lot of whispers between the change room going, what's going on here? Like, not, not, it was great for Michael, made up for yeah, him to yeah. be part of it and I think he wants another local lad in there. Uh, but I don't think Michael has been a part of the, the first team for a while. Mm. I think he was coming back from injury and it was sort of like a shock selection. And, you know, so it was a, he, he just went about something different and it didn't work. Um, unfortunately, it didn't fit. I felt like it didn't work for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, that was just disappointment because that's maybe fair sort of senior derby loss and it's always, always harder to take. Well, again, it was, I, I did pre warn you on this one. It's not the most, I guess. <laughs> Pleasant of memories, but it was an interesting one for me. When we had you on a, a few years ago, um, you went through this story. It was I think we might have teased you up for it, but I'm going to do that again. So in July, around, uh, July 2000s, um, Nick Barnby famously crossed the park. Um, obviously, good reason why we're, we're mentioning <laughs> that. But I, I think for you in particular, you were in and around the England setup at that time, the time with Nick. And mm. he, you know, almost very quickly in, in the October, you played against the Maran Fields. We lost on that given day. Talk to us a little bit about that scenario, because again, a lot of younger Evertonians will 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 have heard of you know Nick Barnby, you know leaving Everton, going to Liverpool. Maybe on paper it doesn't look like a, a massive deal. Um, mm. I remember as a fan, Nick has had a brilliant season. The season before, he was outstanding. He's obviously got his England call up on the back of that. There were some financial things going on at the club at the time, and you know there's, there's mixed stories that have come out since. But remember, remember in that time, sorry, as an Evertonian. As a teammate, and Nick, what was that like? And then how was the derby, you know, coming up against them after? Yeah, it's 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 easy to talk about it now because we know a lot more of what went on off the sure. pitch. But um, back then, I was a youngster. Um, I wasn't really in the first team dressing room uh, because we had so so many players <laughs> like like the Chelsea <laughs> today. Chelsea, I think you know, so I didn't really have that connection. Um, 
with the first team players. We had so many youngsters, but, but liked where I was. But obviously training with them every day, Nick was, you know, I remember Nick walking into Everton's first training session and we, we both elbowed each other back back then. He must be thinking, who's this little man, <laughs> you know, all over him. And I was making sure, look, you're at Everton, you, you, you've got to show it. And look, he was a small lad, you know, yeah. but he, he can put himself about and, you know, he had a great football and brain. Um, liked to play football, liked to work hard. He was a good professional and that's what you wanted. You're like, yeah. great. And as you said, he, he, he was in fantastic form for us and... Um, the opportunity came to him to go to, to cross over and yeah, you know, as a player, you're thinking you know, that's brave. You know, mm. there was a lot of uh, hatred for him. Um, you know, even though he's he's from Hull, you know, yeah, I there's, think a, there's a, a few songs that come to mind. Now yeah, that a, you know, so there was a lot of pressure building up to that derby on, and I all I knew was it's going to be a massive battle, yeah, but it's yeah. me versus him. Mm. You know, it's um, he's on my side of the pitch, and I know Nick likes to go inside, and yeah, and um, so I. I I thought I'll, I'll, I'll have his game, but you know, my friends are giving me stick. You know, the blue side is going to make sure you know yeah, you, you yeah. stick one on him. And um, and we had that moment. You know, we there was a there was a corner for them, and I don't think I myself cleared it, but someone near post headed it, and then the ball's gone thirty yards uh, outside the box. And I've looked up, sprinting for the ball, I've looked up and seen Nick. Nick's looked up, seeing me. He knows what's going through yeah, my head, yeah. and vice versa. And we just both went in, honest, hard. Fair, you know, weather, but I think he was a little bit cuter. I think he slowed down just at the yeah, right moment. Yeah. I wanted to win the ball. He the ball and go through him after it, yeah. Yeah, he wanted, uh, and he wanted to give up a throw and away and get me, you know. So <laughs> he, uh, he, he got me right in, uh, not in uh, Greg G- uh, Gash right in my knee and I had to have stitches at half time for Liverpool doctor. But then he, he got the early goal. Um, I'm frustrating with that because he's, he's, he wasn't my man. Yeah, because it's on the set piece. It's Coming on the back words. post, didn't he? Yeah, and it was, and then you're thinking, you know, it's the story's written for them. But mm. you know, we, it was it was difficult for the players. Um, but it was the game was almost all about him, wasn't it? Like, it was all about him, and you get that, and the fact and the mm. fans get that. But the players, we wanted to make sure he'd made a, a mistake. Yeah, you yeah. know, so it was up to us to, to put the, to, the set, yeah. to, to, to put the pressure on them and, and make sure you know that Nick feels like he's done the wrong thing. And obviously, with hindsight now, we we know the reasons why he got back in the England side, and that was the reason why he wanted to to, to move over. But it's always it's, it's it's always difficult in every club. You know, when you see players move on, you got to play against them. You know them inside out, and and they know you're inside out, and it, it's, it's trying to win one of them battles. And unfortunately, you know, Nick come back with a big smile on his face that day. He did, yeah. Yeah, sorry for bringing up. I've brought up two <laughs> stingers there, two hours and the, the three, but in general, as you say, yeah. We haven't got many to talk about. No, 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 that's it again. No, in your time, you, you've done all right, though. We had a decent record there at Anfield and at Goodison, but I'm going to bring you, bring you into the, I guess, the modern day now. Um, we're, we're out. I mean, we're not going to go, we're not going to go in the ins and outs of the form, as you said before. I think it's, 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 you know, it's spot on. I don't. I think form does go out the window, and I think f- for me, and again, without being a player, I think psychology plays a big part. I think obviously the manager, managers will will play a big part. How are you feeling going into the into into this week against this Liverpool team? Yeah, again, we touched on it before. It, it's the nerves, but the excitement of you know the first derby of the season. Um, look, the you know we don't know what type of Everton will turn no. up. You know, sometimes I feel. We don't want to be too clever with the team selection. You've got to try and keep it as smooth. Away from home, I think Sean Dice seems to set us up better mm. than he does at Goodison Park. Um, so that might help us. Um, but the players have got to show that in- intensity. Um, and by that, I mean, if you look at James Garner's performance against Aston Villa and then the, our last league game, when he presses, he's actually trying to win the ball. Yeah. He's actually trying to force an error. And if the Villa game... They basically gifted us two goals because yeah, of that yeah. press. And the same as Bourne, we've got gifted two goals because of the press. And it's not just about, well, I've got to close the space down and be there as a number or a mannequin. It's it, it been frustrating me with that sort of aggression that we've been showing. But touched on, we've got to be cute with our aggression as well. We don't want to have any, obviously, early yellow cards. Yeah. I think Ashley Young... He's, he's had a couple he's of games, hasn't he? He's had he's a few. And, and Brentford then, away and, and then And the then weekend. even Bournemouth, they, they started... Going down that yeah, flank, yeah. you know, putting the pressure on him, and, and to be fair, they held him his own. He kept, mm. you know, his experience and kept himself on the pitch. But you know, derbies are different. Referees yeah. act differently. Um, players can uh, react differently. But it's again, it's it's a huge opportunity for you just to make your own history. You know, we, we spoke about Kev again before. You know, we mm. spoke about you know Richie uh, um, and, and Sigerson when we didn't have the opportunity to to celebrate that win. Um, 
these lads have got this opportunity. It's going to be a difficult game, but every game in the Premier League is very, very difficult uh, against your rivals. There always that added pressure, but these are why you play football. These yeah. is why you, you put that shirt on to express yourself in the big occasions. Go out, enjoy it. Express, don't leave anything out there. You know, when there's been so many moments in, in my day and, and, and since that we've probably haven't left everything out there. We've sort Shrunk of second guess what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, we didn't rise the occasion and let, and let the game go by. Look, I get it. I know I played Celtic Rangers derbies and that's happened as well. You know, some fantastic games I've been involved in and some really boring. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and even make sad derbies. It's just like, yeah, we'll, no, we'll just take anything <laughs> yeah. possible. But I think the lads, what, October, can Sean Dice set up a team and for this month to be unbeaten. We've only got mm. a couple of games, two difficult games, West Ham away. Yeah. Uh, um, as well, uh, but we can finish this this month unbeaten if we can stick together and have a, a bit of a belief in ourselves. I think mm. even when we went one nil up last week, a couple of weeks ago, sorry, at Goodison, I think we sort of forgot that belief that we actually yeah, yeah. can play football. We can do it in moments. We did it against Brighton last year. We, we you know, we were one nil up and we sort of sat back and they added a, they put the pressure on us a little bit. Mm. But we've got to be able to express ourselves a bit more. I think Onana did that in the second half. I think the first half, he was sort of playing within himself a little yeah. bit. Um, but as we, I think obviously the second goal sort yeah, of give us that bit, yeah, bit, of as a, bit as a gap to go out there and, and play football a little bit better. But I thought that second half performance was, um, I was really pleased with the way Onana started expressing himself and getting around the pitch. With a, looks like he's playing with a smile on his face yeah. again. Um, but we showed we had that belief and yeah, they were poor, but we've still got a job to do. Um, look, it's going to be a different task against against them over the park but we've just got to be there as a team help each other yeah. out but don't sit back don't want an Arsenal repeat I, no, wouldn't, no. I don't want sitting back and letting teams any team Being get passive, into yeah. a rhythm You're getting into a rhythm and giving teams a, an opportunity to get into a rhythm it's so difficult to stop mm -hmm. you know if they get into they'll, they'll grow in confidence they'll think is that all they've got you know and and sometimes you know if we've got no answer to that it's going to be a long 90 minutes for us all but I just think the lads need to be which they will they'll be there f for each other if someone makes a mistake, you know, just get up straight away, get on with it. You know, the game's going to you know, go on for 90 plus minutes. So there's time to get back into the game if things go wrong. But you know, there's a chance for you to create your own history. So good luck to you and just leave everything out there. Definitely. Well, there's a few interesting things. I mean, you, you touched on the Villa game, thought the Brentford game. Similar to Villa, we just didn't let them settle. I think that's key. I completely agree with you there. I think a p key player in that as well, and, and it might cause a little bit of a selection headache for, for, for Zeich is Jack Harrison. I think he's a person who presses from the front, which I think is something bar de core eh, that, that we lack at times in terms of going and harrying their back four and, and making it difficult for them to play into that middle thirds, which I think if you can do that against Liverpool, I, I think you can have some success. Um and I think the other slightly interesting dynamic is around Deitch's record as well in terms of when we've gone ahead. I spoke to a few Liverpool fans, as you, as you do, unfortunately, um, and they pointed out how many times they've gone behind this season and, and how frustrating it is for them. How important is that first goal this weekend? Yeah, that's, I think that's... Um, it, it's, a, it's a strange stat, obviously, when we go ahead, we, we do well. Mm. Um, but many times this season, Liverpool have started pretty slow. Especially mm. at twelve thirty, um, yeah. but they've got the confidence and the belief that they're still they a better team, yeah. and they've come back and they've done it time and time and time again. Mm. So they they won't panic if that happens yeah. to them. Um, it's how we adapt if we go a goal down with being our question mark. Yeah, exactly. You know, our heads have dropped. You know, we didn't. I think that's more we, what I'm getting at. Yeah, the, we the, sort the, of go off game either. plan a little bit. Um, yeah. Even you know against Luton, you know, we didn't know what style of play we'll play. We're chasing the game, you know, we're kicking long balls, and it doesn't suit us. Um, if you've got the right personnel in there, yes, maybe so. Mm -hmm. um, but I talked about Jack Harrison. Um, look, he work rates there. Um, on and off the ball, which is good, but we do need wingers on the pitch. If you're mm -hmm. going to play DCL up front, he, yeah. he, he thrives off wingers. And But we know Liverpool's, I couldn't say, I can't say it's, it's a weakness, but their full-backs love, the yeah. the, the, those full love pushing on. Yeah, and that's where yeah. the gap's going to be. So you've got to be able to, yes, okay, you've got to match them. Mm -hmm. Sean Dice has got a pick person that he can trust that'll match them. You know, we've probably had in the past say to Marty Gray, mm. may go once, may go back twice, but then he might switch off and then that's it. Yeah, it's a, yeah. You know, they've left a, a door open for them to take an opportunity. Um, I think Harrison and McNeil, <clears throat> yeah, I think they're honest. They'll do that work, but also have they got the ability to drive forward and get into that space? Um, that's where they're going to create a lot of space, uh, leave a lot of gaps at Liverpool. And that's for, for Calvert-Lewin, that's for Decore to run into. You know, and I think, like Decore's form 
is that as that sort of second striker, he, he's got that press. You know, yeah. he, he likes to do it. He, he thrives on doing it. He's probably helping DCL with his legs as well to keep DCL central. I want DCL central. That's when he was most threatening when we had uh, Hamid Rodriguez he stayed in that sort of six yeah, bo- yeah. yard box area and trust your teammates to put it in the right areas and you know, Dominic will beat anyone in the air if you, if you get that delivery so you've got to get the balance right um, and that, it's, a, it's a headache for Sean Dice for, to feel who's going to play in the middle I think the middle of the pitch yeah. the, the middle's Absolutely. really you know a head scratcher and I think he got it spot on a couple of weeks ago by default well yeah because <laughs> of the injury but it'd be so tempting won't it for him to play a guy because but of the way the because the way he's set up mm. he, pro- he probably will you mm. know um, but I, I just I James Garner you know I feel it's probably going to be I, I unfortunately think it'll be Harrison who makes way you know or, or McNeil and he'll put Garner to the right which it, know, t- it takes him off his game but yeah he, he, you can't play DCL with no wingers. No, no, I agree. Uh, so he's got to have put a winger on there somewhere. Mm. And if he's if he's going left or right, fair enough. Mm. Um, I get it. Um, but the middle of the pitch, I think we've struggled uh, for personnel and I think tactics. I think Sean Dyson really struggled to dominate teams in possession. Mm. We've played three centre midfielders, but two of them are always defensive and we yeah. can't keep possession. We struggle. Um, Liverpool, on the flip hand, they like possession. They like, like to go through the middle, McAllister. And they're more fluid, aren't they? They're more fluid. They've yeah. obviously got a great understanding. Yeah, They've yeah. got a style of play that won't change. Mm. They, they believe in that system. We're still in transitional of trying to f- find out our best formation our, for our best personnel. Uh, like when McAllister's come in and he's receiving the ball, a lot of stuff going through him, but he's making a lot of mistakes as well. Yeah, he's yeah. getting caught on the ball. So that's that's something we've got to look at. You know, yet look, he's a World Cup winner. He's a top mm. player, but he's the one that they like to go through. I mean, you've, got to, you've got to try and obviously stop it at source because you know their danger men are off the bench yeah, uh, yeah. And, the, and the front three you know mm. you, you, you <laughs> they're, they're going to be so difficult to, to stop they, you know, they're so dangerous in that final third they, they've got their own sort of style that way that we know that's going to be difficult so we've got to start winning our battles in that middle which we I don't think we have enough this season no no um, especially with the amount of personnel we've had in there who, who they should those who, types who of players you'd expect that you'd expect them to win the battles you know yeah. um, possession wise we overturn it far too easily mm. um, so that's what I'm, I'm I contradict myself when you say you've got to show a little bit of composure in there you've got to win your battles but also you can't get caught on a ball and I think especially Garner again a couple of occasions especially last year has been guilty of both I agree, and, and and that's why I think, despite the fact I expect Dyke to only go with one of the wingers and to play James Garner to, to the right, I do think that we need his, his ball-playing ability in the middle and his composure on the ball. Mm. I think Guy shows that composure at times, but it's it, it, that extra second he wants on the ball because he's not a natural, you know, as I say, not, not a natural mm. ball-playing midfielder. He does t- tend to get caught out, doesn't he? And, and it, it always tends to be that pass... I, I Backwards as well that yeah, he gets caught in. He gets a yeah. A lot of people get on his back for that. I sort of get it, but I think it's more down to we haven't really got a start of play hundred percent yet. I mm. think if there's an outlet, he doesn't even think about it. He wants yeah, to keep yeah. the ball, so he, he plays it square. It's a schoolboy. Yeah, yeah, play square yeah. balls. You yeah. know, it's square and backwards. But if the ball just you know falls to him, if he can just put it into the corner. Just play it that's around the corner, perfect. around the corner, yeah. Just yeah. first time round the corner, down yeah. the side. You know that's where the space is. Don't even think about. That's it. all I could do. You know, <laughs> if, it's, yeah, if it's not, if there's no one there, fair enough. You can yeah. reset. Yeah. You can reset yourself, make yourself difficult to break down. But as you said, taking that extra touch and slowing mm. it down, it gives them a chance to, to nick it or to read the ball. They press, they yeah. press high, they press fast, and, they, and effectively, we can't, we can't, yeah. t- we can't take them chances. Mm. And I'll just put it into. If I was him, I was outside of the foot, inside the foot, right into that corner, and hope DCL can chase it down. Or if you got Jack Harrison on the pitch or McNeil, great. You know that's that's the only ones are trying to exploit uh, the spaces. You pretty much you pretty much touched on it anyway. But how's the game won? And give us a prediction. Before we, before oh, we <laughs> well, I'm 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 putting a target out there for for for, for Dice and the team to be unbeaten this year uh, this this, this month. This month you know, we've only got two more games to play and it, I think that'd be a massive confidence booster. We've had an e- well we thought on paper it was an easier start for the season when mm. the fixtures come out. We've got a difficult run of games to come through now. And I think these are little targets that they've got to set themselves personally. Got to make and, up some and the manager and yeah. look what what a better way to start than playing against your arch rivals away. You know, difficult game but the confidence out of this performance, you know will give them something to sit on for the, for the rest of the season. Um, goals, how are we going to score goals? I think set pieces for us are going to be massive, mm. but both ends of the pitch. Yeah, it's you know, both boxes, yeah, Look, they're, it? they're dangerous going forward. They're very fluent. They're very fast. They, they cause a lot of team problems, of course. Uh, that's 
that's always an issue for us. But set pieces for both, of, for, for, for especially for Everton on both um, both boxes, I think are going to be massively important in this game. It's like, yeah, we, we play a certain way. We, we, we've got a certain style when we go forward. <clears throat> but can we be a bit cute? We've got a big team. You know, so we don't always have to do... I'm not giving the game away here to any <laughs> of the red side. I don't think they're actually listening to no, Klopp's no. on the on, on the podcast list of what they're going to be doing. But I think we've been very obvious in our set pieces. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're going to a certain player each and every time to win the first ball and the second ball. Yeah. This works great, but let's, can we come up with something else? Can we? Yeah. Can the coaching staff? Most teams now, have done that to us, haven't they? Yeah, they have. Yeah. Well, can we don't we haven't changed our style. Yeah, yeah. So my concern is for our defensive set pieces, we haven't changed our style. Mm. The edge of the box is free. Doncaster yeah. found that out, yeah. you know, and we haven't changed since. We, but defending a goal, I get what Sean Dice is doing. He's getting, mm. he's, he's defending a goal. He's getting many bodies as possible to protect that goal. Well, he used to do that a lot. The amount of times, yeah. But we had personnel to go and win the ball. True, yeah, to go out and put, yeah. You know, so I, I, I get it. But you know, the, I think Everton's probably best record was under Ancelotti, who yeah, defended yeah. set pieces of, in a very strange way. He used to defend really deep, didn't very he? deep, but yeah, it yeah. worked because he spotted the personnel. Yeah, yeah. You think that these can't stay, keep a high line. You know, yeah. they've got to keep it deep, mm. keep it compact, and it. it when you do that, the opposition can't get a run Got on no you. Got no spaces after you So it, it's yeah. a standing jump. Um, so that needs to improve from us. Mm. And that's going to be a concern. I think he, he, even a good a couple of weeks ago, after we went 1-0 up and they had three or four corners back to back and the nerves set in because you yeah. think, oh, here we go again. Um, but you know, the lads, to be fair, they, they stood up to it. But I just think it needs tweaking a little bit because even the Arsenal goal against us, um, well, it's a fantastic finish. It was the seventh or eighth time they he, played that. They've same. done it, but it's the personnel we have got. I think we had nine players. I th- oh, no, I can't remember. I have to look back at it again. Mm. But I remember commenting after after the game. I think we had basically nearly everyone back in our box, and Arsenal yeah. only had three players, and two of them were unmarked. Yeah, one was the goal scorer, one was Hayes, who was the mm. the main striker. So yeah. why are those two unmarked? And then you got the personnel there. So that's just taking a bit of accountability of Sean Dice and the coaching team will set up at Finch Farm how he wants to do it. But, but as a player, yeah. As a player, things change. If I'm yeah. struggling, if I'm marking someone I'm struggling against, can I switch? Can and that's I, the criticism of this team sometimes, a lack of, of leaders out there. It's leaders you've got and, Tarky and, and maybe yeah, Pickford. You, you don't have to take on board everything the manager yeah, says. Yes, yeah. yeah, so of course, that's the game plan. You want to mm. do that, but the, the moments change games, you know. Go back to um, say th- like the Luton game where Malenko had two. Yeah, yeah. You know, yes, Malenko should have shouted, but it might have been too late. But it's being one of the leaders on the pitch going, well, where's the danger man? Mm. You know, where, where's the, where's the one going to hurt us? You know, Alan Shearer was pe- was brilliant back in our day at that. He'll go and try and pick on the weakest one, yeah, yeah. the smallest one. So I've got a better chance of scoring the yeah. goal. It's not rocket science. Yeah, yeah. You know, so if you're one of the defenders there or one of the big powerful guys, you've got to try and match up and. You look for their danger man, so whether it's going to be Van Dyke or whoever, you know, you can't leave Van Dyke against someone, you know, like Harrison or yeah, Garner yeah, Gay. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the matches, it's not comp- competitive enough. So it's, you, yeah, you've got a positions, but also you've got to um, think for yourself. And I think the good players find their moments to think for themselves, and we need to do that a little bit more. Still haven't got that prediction. <laughs> I'm <laughs> going for it, um, that the coffee's kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping for a draw, and, yeah. and I think that's my target. I, I, I want Got a mix to, of head and heart. Yeah, there. look, obviously, yeah. of course, I love us, love us to win. Mm. Uh, head over heart. I'm going to find it difficult, but I think the um, the twelve thirty might help us more. Oh, and yeah, it will yeah. help them. So I'm although they're looking for a draw. They've had loads, haven't they? As they they haven't loads, like. yeah. They, they won the last one, so they've got that yeah. monkey off the back, I suppose. <laughs> so um, let's hope they revert back to <laughs> getting get beat at twelve thirty. But um, look, I'll be happy to walk away with a draw. I would snap your hands off for that. <laughs> um, no, but listen, thanks, Michael. Paulie, really appreciate your time. Again, um, thanks for taking us down memory lane. And again, um, look forward to this weekend. Hope you have a, a good day, wherever you spend it. Where are you, where are you watching it? You, you're down your um, way, you're going into... No, t- well, there's, um, tickets are... Uh, I've ordered, so um, I'm undecided what to do. My lad's pestering me to take him. And yeah. He wants, obviously, to to see the Joseph side, and I've been there on both sides, so it's the best place yeah. <laughs> to be when you win, but it's also the worst That's place it. as well. 100%. So I'm undecided what I'm doing right now, but uh, either way, you know, I'll have my, fing- my fingers and toes are all crossed. Yeah, once you wake up on, that, on the Saturday morning, put your blue undies on, I'm pretty sure I don't know where yeah, you're going. Yeah, you exactly, yeah. <laughs> no, thanks again, mate. And, and again, thanks to everyone for tuning in. Um, don't forget to catch our other episodes this week. Um, we've got a Reds episodes, if you like, or an opposition podcast with Peter Hooten from the farm. 
And we've also got the Lego podcast lads who are joining us to have a bit more of a debate on the game at the weekend. Thanks for joining us always and speak to you soon.